Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be reviewing the all new Samsung Galaxy S10. Now this new super phone was just released by Samsung in March of 2019, so it really is a brand new phone out on the market today. Now Samsung released three different phones at this time. They released the S10e, the S10, and the S10 Plus. In this video, I'll be reviewing what I think most people are gonna be buying, the middle one, which is the S10. Now this phone has four different cameras on it. It has a lot of amazing features about it. It's what I might consider to be one of the best phones of 2019, so in this video, I'm going to really dive in and explain the differences that make this phone really unique before you start buying it or anything like that. So stick around for the rest of this video. There really is a lot to talk about with this brand new Samsung phone. So starting off with the mechanical features of this phone, this phone has a metal bezel all the way around as you can see right there. It's really nice and round, it's not too smooth, it's easy to hold and it doesn't fall out of your hand and it's honestly a very good size to hold as well. So on the front and the back you have glass, it's Gorilla Glass, I'll talk about how strong that is in a second. And then right there you see where you can put in your SIM card and your SD card. Now the SD card I believe can go anywhere up to 512 gigabytes. So storage should honestly not be a problem by any means for this phone, especially considering the onboard storage for this is a minimum of 128 gigabytes. Now as you go down the side you see your volume up and volume down buttons right there as well as yes that's right the Bixby button. So the Bixby button is honestly you know they're not going to get rid of it. It's always around in the Samsung Galaxies. People always talk about it but this one is a little bit cooler because you can not only press it once to get Bixby or you can press it twice and open up a custom app of your choice. So right here if I double tap it it'll open up Snapchat. When you get to the bottom right there, they do actually have the headphone jack, so that's nice for anybody looking to use wired headphones, wired earbuds, or even maybe an aux cord in their car. Now as you go to the middle, they have a USB-C for charging and for other inputs. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in this video. You have your microphone right there and you have one of two speakers right there. Continuing around the side over here, you have your power button right there. And then as we look over on the top, the other thing I didn't quite mention, I don't know if you can see it right here, but right there you have your speaker. So you have your second speaker right there, which makes sense. That's where you're gonna be, you know, if you're talking on the phone, that's where one of the speakers is. And if you play music, it'll play out of both of those speakers. Now here you can also see the camera, which is cut out of the glass on the front. So they actually laser cut this through the AMOLED screen and place it in very precisely. So you have a screen all the way on either side. Now their backgrounds kind of do a good job of hiding that. So if I swipe down, this is where you can really sort of see uh, see how you can you can see exactly where it's cut out right there and it sort of just works all the way around it as if that was part of the screen you just have a little circle cut out where you can't see now on the other side on the back see if we can get the light on there right so you have three different cameras you have one that's a very wide angle you have one that's a standard angle and then you have one that they call telephoto which is a 2x optical zoom over here you also have your flash and of course you have your heart rate sensor which can also sense your uh, oxygen saturation in your blood as well as your stress level whatever that means now, when Samsung released this phone, they also released their brand new Galaxy Buds right here, and I'll be reviewing that in another video. They pair very easily with this phone, so you literally just open them up, and it'll automatically pair with your phone. You can put them in, listen, whatever you want. They have a little touchpad on the side, so you can control the songs, so you can control, you know, if you wanna do like Google Voice or whatever, anything like that. And on top of that, this also has a really cool feature where you can just set your phone down on the table and set this on top, and you can wirelessly charge these, or you can charge another phone with your Samsung Galaxy Galaxy S10. So if you want to know more about the Samsung Galaxy Buds, or if you want to know more about the Samsung One UI, so they have a new interface for this phone, a new wrapper for Android, then definitely be sure to go down and click the subscribe button to my channel. I'll be making new videos about those in the next week. So some of the really attractive features about this phone, first of all, they increased the battery size on this to 3400 milliamp hours, which should be more than enough to get you through an entire day with this phone. So today I used it and after nine hours, I was at 50% battery, which means of course I'll be getting about 18 to maybe even 18 and a half hours on this battery. And that was with a lot of apps open, that was with the screen brightness up and that was with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi on the entire day. So definitely a good battery on this. So another really attractive feature of this phone is the 6.1 inch quad HD 
plus AMOLED Infinity display, which is HDR10 plus certified and has 550 pixels per inch. So it's a very high quality display, of course. And as a side, of course, you can see right there, this is sort of what they had on the other galaxies uh, where you have sort of the rounded edges on the side to sort of have an infinity display as they call it. So the screen is absolutely amazing on this phone. And one of my favorite features is actually that when my phone is off or when it's face down, because it's an infinity display and wraps all the way around, they actually have an edge lighting. So you can actually have a notification and it'll light up all the way around your phone, just a little ring of light and it might be blue or green or something depending on what kind of you know phone call or text you're getting and that'll sort of notify you and if you can just see that when your phone's face down or face up or whatever, it's a great way to not have your phone loud or vibrating or anything like that. So definitely a cool feature there. On top of that, they also have behind the screen, you have a fingerprint sensor. So the feature you might have heard the most about on this phone is the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, which is behind the screen. So this works based on sonar waves bouncing off your fingerprint and recognizing the little ridges and grooves within your fingerprint, sort of like how echolocation is used for bats. So the way it works is you can just put your finger right there and it'll recognize and sign in right away without even having to turn your screen on. So it is very quick, honestly, I don't know if it's as quick as, you know, the face recognition for me. I think it's, you know, just as convenient if I turn it on and look at my phone. And then the only other thing is you have to swipe up. So no matter what, you're touching the screen. But if I'm looking at it, a lot of times I find that it recognizes me before I even get to put my thumb right there to sign in. So definitely a really cool feature. I would set up, honestly, both the fingerprint sensor and the face recognition for the fastest way to get into your phone, no matter what the lighting is. So as I mentioned, this phone is very strong. It has Gorilla Glass 6 on the front and Gorilla Glass 5 on the back. That means it's really not gonna be scratched or broken very easily compared to what older phones might have been doing. It's also IP68 certified, which means that it is good to drop into water for up to 30 minutes, and, you know, only a couple feet deep. But still, if you drop this in like a toilet or something, hopefully you're not, you know, diving in with your hand and grabbing anything from the toilet. But if you ever did drop this in the toilet, it should be fine to get out and still use. So you don't have to worry about dropping $1,000 in a toilet and totally losing it forever. So as I mentioned before, this phone has four different cameras, so let's just try them out right now. Okay, so nothing super exciting here on the front-facing camera, although it can shoot 4K, so this is definitely a very high-quality camera. If you're trying to shoot any kind of, you know, personal vlogs or anything like that, it's not a bad camera to use. So with the rear-facing camera, you can shoot in 1080p or 4K, and you can shoot up to 60 frames per second in 4K as well, and you have three different lenses. So here's your first lens, uh, which is just gonna show you your standard angle. Then you can go into telephoto mode, which is really zoomed in, as you can see, that's purely optical zoom right there. And of course, you can then do you know digital zoom even beyond that. And you can zoom smoothly between the different lenses. So right there, suddenly it starts using you know the, the last lens, and you can't really tell. It's almost seamless unless you zoom really quickly. Uh, and then when you go back to the original lens, it's right there. And then of course you also have the wide angle lens, which is very wide angle. And now you can actually see, you know, the bookshelf over on the side right there. So let's talk now a little bit more about what you get in the box when you first buy the Samsung Galaxy S10. So when you first open the box, you are gonna get the phone in the box. Surprise, surprise, the phone comes in the box. So next you'll get this little adapter right here which goes from USB-A to USB-C and notice how this is not totally centered and the reason for that is so you can plug it into your phone and it sits flat on the ground so that your phone's not being bent up at all like that. Now this might be useful if you're plugging in something to your phone that's USB-A so maybe for example like a security key or something like that to sign into you know different accounts. So good job on that one Samsung, that is definitely uh, a neat little thing to have. Next we have a little turbo charging block right there, this is obviously going to come with your phone as well as the cable right there which goes from USB-A and one side to USB-C on the other. So you can use all of your standard charging blocks or charging ports around your house. Next, it comes with wired earbuds. So that is what you're gonna be using that wired port, the headphone jack, as I mentioned before. Uh, and so these are, you know, a braided cable right there, and then it sort of goes to rubber up at some point, and then it has a little control right there uh, with a volume up, volume down, and just, I guess, a play pause in the middle. So nothing really special about these. These are made by AKG. And as I said, I bought the Galaxy Buds, so I didn't see any sense in, you know, getting these and using them. So I haven't really used those yet at all, to be honest. I've been focusing all my time using these so I can make a good review for you guys about these. The last thing you get is this little shish kebab right here of different earbud sizes. So if you don't like this size, you can just plug on any one of these. Just pull it off and plug it on and it'll fit your ear correctly. So this phone is honestly lighter than I expected. It seems pretty light. It's easy to fit in a pocket. It's easy to hold. I have, you know, slightly larger hands, but still it's not a bad phone to reach all the way across. And the One UI also moves a lot down to the bottom right where your thumb might be, so it's a lot easier to use. Now, I think it weighs about 157 grams, and if I'm doing the math correctly, that's about 0.3 pounds, so it really is a lighter phone than I expected considering, you know, how, how much they're actually 
actually is in this. So not only is wireless charging available with this phone as it is with most nice phones out there, but this one also has reverse of that, which is going to be the wireless power share, which means that if your phone, if somebody else's phone dies and maybe it's an iPhone or whatever it is, anything that takes wireless charging can be charged from the back of your phone. Now I'll tell you, if you're my friend and you're hanging out and your phone dies, I'm sorry, but I'm making phone calls for you. I'm not giving you my battery power. What I will be using this for is to charge things like my Galaxy Buds right here, which also accept wireless charging. I can go into wireless charging mode and then simply set them on there. They make a little sound and then they'll be charging from my phone battery and going directly into my Galaxy Buds. This phone also has some really cool gesture features. So if you wanna take a screenshot, for example, you can just swipe your palm across the screen. It'll take a screenshot. If you wanna triple tap that button, It'll do some emergency calls where it sort of gives video from all the back cameras and the front camera if anyone's attacking you or anything like that. Definitely a great feature to have right there. The phone, of course, just wakes up whenever you pick it up. You have some really cool tools on here like a pedometer which automatically can track your steps all day within the Samsung Health app. This phone is equipped with eight gigabytes of RAM, and if you get the S10 Plus, you can get all the way up to 12 gigabytes of RAM. This is equipped to handle wireless charging 2.0 technology for the fastest charging of your phone. This also has an octa-core chipset for a processor that can do honestly more than you probably will need it to do. So plenty of horsepower in this phone. And then the four cameras are, you know, the primary rear camera is 16 megapixels. Then the two peripherals are each 12 megapixels. And then on the front, you have a 10 megapixel selfie camera. This phone has Wi-Fi 6.0 for up to 1.2 gigabits per second of download speed and LTE for up to two gigabits per second download. As I mentioned, this has two different speakers on it and they're Dolby Atom speakers. They're tuned by AKG. So not only do you have two different biometrics on this phone that you can use to sign into your phone or maybe like your, your Samsung Pay or any other apps you want, but it's also secured by Samsung Knox. So it's a more safe way than their previous phones to secure your data within the phone. The S10 is available in four different colors, as I mentioned before, which is prism white, black, flamingo pink, prism blue, and if you get the S10 Plus, you have the ceramic options of getting ceramic black and ceramic white. I'm a really big fan of the Bixby routines on this phone, so you can really define everything and say, if this, then that, for every single possible situation. So you can say, for example, if I'm connected to my car by Bluetooth, go into driving mode, which is going to turn on, you know, do not disturb, it'll make the font really big, it'll open up Android Auto, you can turn the volume up and play Spotify, right away uh, and do all these different things and then as soon as you unpair from your car and walk away it goes back to normal so you don't have to change a bunch of settings when you first get into your car. Now I'm a big proponent of not texting and driving so in my opinion that is a huge safety feature of this phone. So what are the drawbacks to this phone? What are the negatives here? Honestly there really are not many. This is a really well-made phone in a lot of different ways. I'm very impressed with the build quality as well as the different features on board. I'm very impressed with the One UI. The only thing I can actually think that might be a struggle with this phone is actually finding finding a screen protector. So because you have the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor under the screen, you can't just go slapping on any glass screen protector on this one. And because you have the round edges, it might be a little more difficult to apply uh, a standard screen protector. So application might be difficult and finding a good one might be difficult. But other than that, I really can't see that being a reason not to buy this phone. So another struggle I noticed is actually the fingerprint sensor. While it is really accurate and really quick when you're consistently using the same hand or the same orientation, if you rotate your phone a little bit and try using the same fingerprint, sometimes it doesn't recognize it quite as well as it would have from the other orientation. Uh, and so it might take a little bit longer to sign in like that, or you might just have to use your pin. So guys, what is your opinion of this phone? Honestly, I think there's a lot to talk about here, and this is not the last video I'll be making on this. So as I mentioned before, please remember to subscribe to my channel to see the rest of the videos about this phone. Also, in the comment section below, let me know if there's any other questions you have about this phone, anything you want me to talk about in future videos, or anything you really like about this phone that I didn't mention in this video. So as always, guys, thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.